Longtime fans know and love Jack K. Harry from sitcoms 227 and Sister Sister. This is my aunt Paulina Price, my mom's sister. <laughs> Younger sister. Uh, it's nice to meet you, Miss Price. <laughs> no, 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 uh-uh. You call me Paulina, okay? <laughs> it would be a mistake to call Jackie Harry just another actress. After giving decades to television and theater, the actress is still going strong. Sandra, what is that getter? When you cook, you gotta wear cooking clothes. <laughs> you look like you ought to be on a can of spaghetti. <laughs> However, her role in the industry has evolved. You see, she's more and more passionate about doing right by black women on television. But of course, behind her sheer optimism lies a tragic story too. Join us as we navigate the life and tragic ending of Jackie Harry. Early life of Jackie Harry. Actress, comedian, television personality, and ultimate diva, Jacqueline Yvonne Harry or Jackie, is just not any other name in Hollywood. Direct from an old boyfriend, three. The actress began to make strides in Hollywood when the African-American community barely had any television representation either as screen characters or artists and performers. Jackie's peak years on television began in the mid-80s, and while that environment was subsequently better than the 60s for African-American artists, there was still a long way to go. When that handsome car owner comes over here, I'll convince him I'm responsible only for the taillight. This is when Harry comes in. Her larger-than-life performances on shows like 227 and Sister Sister. The actress's commercial and critical success paved the way for black women in the television industry, who were often overlooked during the awards season. Now look, Ray, I'd rather have my eyes sewn shut, my toenails ripped off backwards, stuffed up my nose and Enough my teeth. foreplay. <laughs> for young black girls and actresses, Jackie became the quintessential success story. Against all odds, the star had achieved it all, including a famous acknowledgement from the Emmys. However, Harry was never supposed to be an actress after she had started her mundane job. You wouldn't have known this, but Jackie had a drastic career shift that led her to become an actress. We're the best runner, the fastest runner, the best at track, we're the best at baseball, the best at boxing, the best at basketball, football, I mean, hey, you name it, hey! Let's get into her humble beginnings first and foremost. Jacqueline Yvonne Harry was born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina in 1956 to an Afro-Trinidadian mother, Flossie, and an African-American father, Warren. When she was nine years old, her mother, Flossie, uprooted her life from Winston-Salem and brought her to Harlem, New York, alongside her four siblings. Living in Harlem brought Harry closer to her black identity, which she would further explore in her television projects, such as 227. Plus, moving to New York meant that Harry also got the chance to do what she was passionate about, acting and drama. She joined New York's Harriet Beecher Stowe Junior High School's Drama Club, which led to her first major school production. Harry was only 14 years old when she landed the role of the King in an all-girls school production of The King and I. That monumental experience would later prove to be one of the impetus behind her transformative career change. She began studying acting and music at the High School of the Performing Arts in Manhattan, New York City. There, her principal instrument was the voice with a concentration on opera. However, shockingly, Harry didn't choose to pursue performing arts at a college level. It's unknown why she made that decision. By the looks of it, she had only indulged in acting and music due to her passion and likening for the discipline. For her career, she was entirely focused elsewhere. After graduating from high school, she enrolled in Long Island University where she pursued a major in education. She received her Bachelor of Arts degree in 1975. Immediately after, the soon-to-be actress had a two-year stint at Brooklyn Technical High School as a teacher of American history, but deep down she knew her true passion was in theater. After teaching for two years, Harry left her job to pursue acting gigs in the theater scene of New York. Even then, on multiple occasions, Harry has cited that teaching was her first love. In an interview, she talked about how teaching young boys the true essence of American history was a joyous experience for her, one that she would remember forever. In the same interview, she said, I taught American history, 9th and 10th grade, all boys. I still love teaching. That was my first love. At the same time, Harry tried her best to juggle her love for theater with her passion for educating children. However, 
there were some agents who were seeking her out, and she couldn't strike the balance with her professional work and passion as she had hoped for. Ultimately, she had to make a tough choice and left to pursue acting as her full-time job. Since then, Jackie hasn't ever looked back. Her life in theater. Hi, I'm Jack A. Harry, and some of you may know me from TV. 227, Sister Sister, Designing Women, Amen. Perhaps Harry was born with a lucky charm. Many talented actors and performers make their way to New York to land their first acting role. For Jackie, the process wasn't easier, but it was rather quick. In the same year she joined the theater, she landed her debut role as a nurse in Going Through Change at the Billy Holiday Theater in Brooklyn in the year 1977. The role wasn't a big deal, but of course, performing in front of a large audience in Brooklyn meant that the actress would get noticed. It wasn't shocking that the very next year, in 1978, she made her Broadway debut in a Broadway musical, assuming the role of Melinda Bernand. Once again, Harry had proved herself to be a versatile actress. It's a beautiful, warm day. Then suddenly in the distance, a most gorgeous man approaches. <laughs> in the following year, she took multiple roles in Broadway and off-Broadway productions, such as I'm Getting My Act Together and Taking It on the Road, High, John DeConquer, The Good Ship Credit, Dark of the Moon, and Diva Hattie Wilcox. Her streak would continue throughout the 80s, too, when she took part in national touring productions such as Yubi and One Mo Time. Later, Harry would begin her television career, but her love for theater never died. After garnering critical success on the small screen, she made her comeback to the stage in 1994. This is when she starred as Billie Holiday in the play Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill. Her act was a major success, and it felt as if the actress had rekindled her spirit for the theater. Following her act as Billie Holiday, she took on the role of Madam who runs a bordello, or the character of Madam in the Broadway musical The Boys from Syracuse in 2002. The very next year, she was back at Village Theater to play the role of Cheryl Carter in Urban Transitions, Loose Blossoms, from 2004 to 2006, she did multiple national tours for productions like Not A Day Goes By, A Christmas Carol, Too Good To Let Go, and The Man Of Her Dreams. Her notable national tours would come down to The Clean Up Woman and Me and Mrs. Jones, where she played the role of Jasmine Jones. Today, Jackie Harry is 67 years old but continues to maintain a balance between her television career and her love for the stage. In 2019, she appeared in the production of Head Over Heels at Warner Theatre, where she played the dynamic role of Mother Nelson. Harry's acting and overall persona on the stage were applauded by multiple critics who saw her shining in her role. There's no doubt that Jacqueline is a consistent stage performer. With multiple acting credits on her side, she had made a name for herself in theater, Broadway, national tours, and multiple acting academies. However, Jackie Harry entered the spotlight largely due to her television career, which changed the trajectory for black artists forever. Jackie's groundbreaking television career. Before Jackie could hit the right spot with 227, she took on a few television roles that ultimately prepared her for her breakthrough. Her television acting debut was in 1983 when she appeared on Another World as Lily Mason. She continued her run on the show for the next three years, I don't know. Is that a male turkey or a lady turkey? <laughs> After her first television appearance, the actress was quick to make her motion picture debut, too. In 1984, she appeared in small and bit roles in Moscow on The Hudson and the Cotton Club. While Harry wasn't the star of the movies in any meaningful way, the roles did open her up to multiple opportunities. For instance, The Cotton Club was a box office disappointment, yet it had gotten multiple nods of acknowledgments from the Golden Globes, at the same time, Robin Williams' performance in Moscow on the Hudson had brought the movie some moderate viewership. The movie itself made $25 million at the box office, and the moderate critical success of the film helped. For Harry, the best was to come, though. In 1985, Jacqueline began to co-star as Sandra Clark on the national broadcasting company sitcom 227, and, well, the television was changed for good. When the show started, it was highly debatable if it would be able to stay on air. Then, the show overcame all hesitancy and criticism to become the best family-style sitcom in American history. This the pot and this the pan. 
No, Sandra, this is the pan and this is the pot. For the first time, a highly critically acclaimed show had African Americans as its primary cast. And if that wasn't enough, the sitcom was centralized around three generations of African American women. The show dealt with sensitive and taboo topics with grace and class. But you hated my fire. I loved your fire, but I was always getting burned by it. <laughs> Even though Harry's character Sandra had large connotations of hypersexuality, the writing of the show never became crass or mediocre. Well, please help. All right, all right, I help, I help. Okay, uh, so you out in the country somewhere. <laughs> Not to mention, the show was profoundly fresh in its writing, too. It was a rare occurrence when the plot wasn't focused on male characters, but rather followed through the stories of three women who were navigating a highly unjust world on their own terms. Perhaps this is why the show crossed racial boundaries too. It's true that 227 was largely curated for black audiences as a source of catharsis and closure about the severity of racialized issues and discrimination in America. However, the happy and optimistic storylines were able to garner attention from white audiences too. For the first time, a black comedy was showing America that people, regardless of their skin color, can share similar problems. So, it is pretty much given that for six years, the show was entertaining its audiences. However, behind the scenes, there were some problems on the set that almost tanked the show. Yep, believe it or not, it was Jackie Harry and Marla Gibbs, the official main character of the show, who began to feud on the sets of 227. It is said that Jackie wasn't happy with how Marla got to live the main character spotlight when it was her character that was the most popular with the audiences. So, naturally, the two actresses began to battle for the main character spot, which came with laurels like special plot lines and more screen time. To be fair, Harry had a point. Sandra Clark's man-hungry tendencies coupled with her unapologetic comedic edge would always steal the show. Marla wasn't even in the race. Thankfully, the actresses had kept their feud pretty private. Whenever they had to assume a professional capacity or deliver their scenes, they would simply do their job and call it a day. Later, however, they reconciled and worked on other projects together as well. In a 2010 interview with the National Broadcasting Company, Marla acknowledged that it was Jackie Harry who was the undeniable star of the show. In her own words, I credit her with the success of the show because she was somebody that was easy to write for. According to Gibbs, Harry was able to outshine everyone on the set right from the very beginning. In fact, the actress had given an audition so powerful that the creators of the show were blown away. The best part? Harry wasn't fully aware of how excellent her audition was. Talking about the memorable experience, Jackie said, I just came in and I wanted to be something different, so I had my girlfriend's voice, Val Jandine from high school and Mae West and Lucille Ball. I just put them all together. So yeah, Jackie's maneuver had worked like a charm. The showrunners were so impressed by her acting as well as the overall popularity of her character Sandra that they created a television pilot for her entitled Jackie. It was a huge bummer that the spin-off didn't work out. This is why the creators were forced to tank the series altogether, and the episode Jackie was later added to 227. This wasn't the extent of Jackie's popularity, though. In 1987, the actress was able to clinch an Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a comedy series for her role as Sandra. The Emmy goes to Jackie for 227. This was her first Emmy nomination. The Feet was a trailblazing act in the industry. After all, Jackie Harry was the first black woman to lift the trophy in that particular category. You are the first black woman to win an Emmy for supporting actress in comedy. To achieve that feat, she had beaten Estelle Getty as Sophia Petrillo on The Golden Girls and Justine Bateman as Mallory Keaton on Family Ties. So you can only imagine how groundbreaking that particular achievement was. Even today, there are only two black women other than Harry who have clinched the award in the category. Cheryl Lee Ralph for her iconic portrayal of a kindergarten teacher in Abbott Elementary. And in 2024, 
It was Ayo Edebiri who won for her legendary role in The Bear. For Harry, winning the Emmy was pretty dumbfounding. She had begun acting in the times when representation and celebration for black actresses was very scarce. She didn't even imagine for 227 to blow up, so lifting the Emmy was rather shocking. After winning the award, she gave an exclusive interview to People, where she talked about the surreal feeling of achieving something extraordinary. She said, I wasn't aware that I could win or would win because I wasn't thinking that way, she says. I was coming in hot. I knew that, but I didn't fully appreciate the scope. It was happening to me. I was observing it. In retrospect, now I know how important it was, but I didn't see it coming at all. But I did see success. In Harry's defense, it wasn't perhaps easy for her to see how well she would perform in a high-profile show like 227. When she had begun working on the project, her life had turned upside down in a tragedy that never left her side. Jackie had lost her biggest supporter, cheerleader, and well-wisher, her mom. Flossie Harry was a force to be reckoned with. She was the one who had uprooted her well-established life from Wisconsin-Salem to bring her five children to the land of opportunities, New York. Growing up in Harlem and New York City was groundbreaking for Jackie, who was looking for professional education in the performing arts. In many ways, 227 was Jackie's first big gig despite doing theater and Broadway for several years, so it was given that she wanted to share the moment with her mother. While Flossie witnessed her daughter making major strides on the set, she unfortunately passed away before the show could even air. Losing her mother was a big blow for Jackie, who was left distraught after hearing the news. Eventually, she was able to get it together and deliver the performance of her lifetime in the show. At the back of her mind, the actress knew that what she was doing was remarkably important. The role of Sandra was just not about herself, but other black women who were hoping to tell gravitational stories on television and make it big in the world of glitz and glamour. Perhaps the success of 227 set the tone for the type of work Harry wanted to do. Her roles were always much about the character and the actress herself. Every time she chose to embody someone, Jackie was setting the course straight. Her other groundbreaking work was The Women of Brewster Place, which was based on the 1982 novel penned by the incredible Gloria Naylor. It was Oprah Winfrey who had executive produced the show. Harry was privileged to share the screen with the beloved Cicely Tyson, Robin Givens, Lynn Whitfield, and of course, Oprah herself. The Women of Brewster Place was a powerful show in many ways, not only was it created by an African-American person and starred women of the same background, but it was pretty diverse in its plot lines, too. Centralized around black women who lived in a building on a street called Brewster Place, the show tackled sensitive topics like poverty, female friendships, racial discrimination, misogyny, and same relationships. Perhaps this is why Jackie Harry grew up to value her work in The Women of Brewster Place much more than her performance in 227. While she acknowledges the independent importance of her roles, Harry had always aspired to be a serious actress. That sort of label only came from her work alongside Oprah. So, of course, Harry began to cherish that project a bit more. In 227, her character is often reduced to her man-hungry tendencies and her nasal voice, which has garnered recent popularity on social media. Harry believed that the audiences were complicit in taking away a lot from Sandra, but of course, her role in The Women of Brewster Place made up for that. That wasn't the end of Harry's iconic projects. From 1994 to 1999, Harry appeared in the famous comedy show, Sister, Sister. She had played the role of Lisa Landry, the adoptive mother of Tia Mowry's character, which earned her critical acknowledgments. In 1999 and 2000, Harry won back-to-back -back National Association for the Advancement of Colored People Image Awards for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. Winning accolades for the show was one thing. What really made Harry's experience worthwhile was her young co-stars who played the role of sisters who were separated after their birth. On set, Harry had assumed the role of the television mom of Tia and Tamara, the actresses, on multiple occasions, have talked about how they found an ultimate art teacher in Jackie, who was always ready to teach them a thing or two. In many ways, 
Harry's former tendency of being a high school teacher was pretty much reminiscent of the set. Talking about this experience, Jacqueline said, I like imparting knowledge, but I've learned that everyone doesn't want your knowledge. You have to learn how to get somebody to want to learn. The learning process has to be understood before you can understand what somebody is trying to teach you. In many ways, Harry's role as a teacher is very important for young actresses who don't get the chance to train professionally. Jackie has educational and professional experience in the performing arts, and she feels like as an African-American veteran actress, it is her responsibility to pave the path for the next generation. Her television mom role on Sister Sister is one example. On shows like Days of Our Lives, the actress has assumed the role of a teacher too. Plus, it is not just about acting skills and flawless deliveries. For the actress, the main goal is to teach black women that they will always have to go the extra mile to achieve the accolades they deserve. The ultimate lesson here is to keep going, even if certain things don't work out in your favor. Now we'll look at the certain pitfalls of Harry's career and how she has revived herself into a full-fledged actress. Other projects and activism. It's true that Jackie has some amazing credentials under her glorious name, but of course not all of her gigs were as popular and critically valued as 227 or Sister, Sister. In 1990, Harry earned herself the headlining role for the national broadcasting company comedy pilot from Wit Thomas, called We'll Take Manhattan. While Jackie was super hopeful about the prospect of the show, the pilot only appeared as a summer special and didn't garner enough attention to make it as a regular series on National Broadcasting Corporation. She would later join the cast of The Royal Family after the actor, Red Fox, passed away in a tragic instance. The actress gave her best to the show, but its existing audiences were already too attached to Fox. As a result, Jackie's performance was easily overshadowed and went into a twilight of unpopularity. Later, the show was canceled due to its low ratings. Deviating away from acting roles, the actress tried her luck in reality shows like To Tell the Truth and VH1's Celebrity Fit Club 2 in 2005. While those names were regular on television, Harry's appearance in those shows didn't exactly make headlines. It is safe to say that in the mid-90s, Jacqueline's most notable appearance was in Sister, Sister, as the show got acknowledgments from the Emmys as well as the Image Awards. From 2000 onwards, she appeared in multiple shows including The CW's Everybody Hates Chris and the Black Entertainment Television series Let's Stay Together. From 2012 to 2015, she appeared in Byron Allen's sitcom The First Family, where she played the role of Pauletta Birdsong. After landing the role in the American sitcom, Harry appeared in Disney's much-hyped franchise Girl Meets World. However, Harry wasn't a series regular and appeared in certain episodes like The Pilot, Girl Meets Crazy Hat, and Girl Meets Demolition. She also had a guest role in Two Broke Girls episode and The F***s Problem back in 2016. One would think that such guest roles and small appearances would become the extent of Harry's career. Well, nope. Uh, is something wrong? <laughs> yeah, there's something wrong. On December 8th, 2020, Harry appeared on The Today Show and shocked the world with a groundbreaking announcement. After performing in theater extensively and taking up minor television roles, she was all set to make a comeback with Days of Our Lives. Harry joined the cast of the soap opera as Paulina Price. In 2021, Days of Our Lives was renewed for another two seasons, which naturally led Harry to get an extended contract. The soap opera is very important for Harry who has always strived to pick serious acting roles, such as that of Paulina. Through her character, the showrunners have told a heart-wrenching story of how women grapple with abusive partners and the impact it has on their children. In Paulina, we see a woman who gives up Lonnie, her heart and soul, in hopes of keeping her from her father. On the flip side, she works incredibly hard to build her empire back. Once she is threatened by her abusive ex again, it is her daughter Lani who protects her by killing her own father. While these stories are macabre and unsettling, Harry genuinely believes that these stories are important to tell, especially as a black woman. This is why Jace Euclid also decided to work in the Lifetime movie, Every Breath She Takes, which is also centralized on abuse. About the movie, the actress said, Our new movie, she explains in the caption, 
shows the lengths some abusers will go through to maintain a hold over somebody and how important trust and communication can be to getting that somebody out of a bad situation. In an Instagram post, Jackie also told her audiences how it is important to gain strength from the people whom you care about, and that can only come about if you have the capacity to acknowledge that you have been abused. Plus, there's nothing to be ashamed about acknowledging there has been a person who took away a lot from you. Talking to her audience, Harry said, I'm a very strong woman. Even if you look at me like you're going to hit me, it's over. I'll walk out the door. And I want to raise my kids and grandkids to have that strength because it takes courage to admit that you have been abused. A lot of people are ashamed of it. Since Harry has taken up a vocal role in her pro-women activism, she has not been afraid to call out blatant structures and people in Hollywood that are misogynistic and racist. For instance, the actress became one of the very few bold voices in Hollywood who spoke against Harvey Weinstein, the former disgraced Hollywood mogul who was convicted of sexual assault against women. In a harrowing interview, the actress talked about how African-American women in the industry are forced to take risks and set up meetings with harmful men like Harvey Weinstein simply because they want jobs. While her experience with the mogul was safe and sound, she still had to meet him in his hotel room post-midnight which was a harrowing experience within itself. Even then, today, Harry remains pretty vocal about the cause that hurts several women in Hollywood. It's remarkable that after several decades of being in Hollywood, Harry is still going. It is just unfortunate that while she has made several strides in the industry, her love life has been severely lacking. Jackie Harry today. Today, Jackie is thriving. However, according to many media sources, her love life has been a tragedy. In an interview, the actress expressed concerns about looking for love in the wrong places and how she has made some terrible decisions in her life. Well, we can't say that for sure, but she has been divorced twice in her life. Her first marriage was with the musician and arranger, Jerry Jemmett, which didn't work out. The couple got married in 1980, and after four years of trying their best to stay in a happy marriage, they decided to call it quits. After her divorce, the actress was pretty heartbroken but decided to give love another chance. In 1996, she decided to marry Elgin Charles Williams. For the actress, Elgin seemed like a perfect man. The couple had an extended honeymoon period. Within those years, Harry accepted that she felt profoundly happy. So much so that the couple decided to start a family and adopted a son named Frank. However, the happy illusion was soon over. The couple developed problems that even therapy couldn't solve for them. Eventually, after seven years of matrimonial alliance, they decided to get separated and eventually divorced. Despite these heartbreaks, Jackie hasn't given up on love, but she admits that she wants to date younger men to feel the energy and excitement of life. We don't know what her relationship status is, but Harry is done comprising in her relationships that don't yield into much. The actress also expressed that her schedule is very busy, but if she finds a moment, she will definitely want to go out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.